Before we get to the episode, we want you, dear listener, to ask yourself a question. What have you done these past two years? You know, the pandemic hit us all really hard. What have you really done other than perfect that matzo ball soup recipe of yours? Nothing. Now, we all want to add purpose and meaning to our life, and we just, we have the way to really, really make your dreams come true. If you're listening, you're likely interested in Israel with hopes of traveling here soon. Well, lucky for you, we've got the scoop on Masai Israel journey. With an amazing range of life-changing opportunities in Israel, Masai has many, many programs. They've got gap year programs, academics, internships, volunteering, and careers. The pandemic didn't stop them either, promoting options to study remotely while living in Israel. You don't have to be fluent in Hebrew or break your bank account. They even supply partial funding so you can make a positive impact on the world. You can fuel your passion and you can make your travel dreams a reality. Go to MasaIsrael.org and find out more. This is Eitan Weinstein. And I'm Naor Menninger. And you're listening to Two Nice Jewish Boys. In collaboration with Australian Jewish News, check them out at ajn.timesofisrael.com. Also in collaboration with Arutz Sheva, IsraelNationalNews.com. Six million, a number that resonates with us all. A sum that represents the endless sea of horrors, agonies, and tragedies. Entire worlds that crumbled, infinite realities that ceased to be. Six million is a sacred number. Our guest today, documentary filmmaker David Fischer, was haunted by this number. In his mind, endless questions never cease to bother him. Who's to say there were really six million? Is that a math? Is that a myth? Or an historic fi- fact? In the Holocaust research world, those questions are borderline blasphemy. And indeed, many doors were shut on Fischl's expedition for the truth, but other doors open, opened. In the evening of the International Holocaust Remembrance Day, we are very excited to have Dr. Fish, David Fisher on our show to discuss his new documentary, The Round Number. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. I'm a bit rusty. It's been yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah, I just yeah. came back from about, what, a month, so. Thank you so much. And uh, so where do we start? How, how did this idea even come up? Uh, one of my previous films uh, was titled Six Million and One. After my father passed away, I found his memoir. He had written the last two years of his life. And uh, I didn't know too much about uh, what he endured during the Second World War. But after uh, reading uh, uh, his diary, I understood that he was uh, uh, he was an inmate in uh, a concentration camp in uh, Austria, first in Auschwitz, then was sent to forced labor camps in uh, Austria, and then ended up in a neglected, n- unknown con- camp by the name of Gunskirchen. Um, nobody knew about it. Nobody knew what the purpose of this camp was by founding it. But he was, at the end of the war, a skeleton, a Muslim man, as, we, as, as it used to be called. And uh, uh, he reported, actually, that he left, or he was one of the last inmates that left the camp at the day of the liberation. Yet this camp was the last one of all other camps to be liberated at the end of the war, April 9, 1945 mm. so uh he left the camp he could walk all by himself like a few meters not more and then he uh, uh he found a seated leaned on a tree it was like in a forest in austria and waiting for his death 
because he knew he didn't have any sort of uh, strength to go on. By chance, by luck, by finger of God, I don't know, an American jeep passed by and rescued him. Took him on a jeep, took him to the hospital, and then to rehabilitation center. And therefore I am here because he was saved. But for me it was very clear, very obvious that he could have been like the six million and one. Six million is a very well known figure. This is a tally of, uh, I would say, the uh, Jews that were murdered during the Holocaust. And he was like with a very thin line between life and death, and he could have been the six million one. So, as a matter, uh, as a matter of fact, m many Jews passed away after liberation, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yes. Like very, very uh, shortly after liberation. Uh, exactly so. And his story f haunted me, and I was like passing of a question, how did he survive, what happened to him? And one of the things that I found in his diary, uh, which was uh, interesting for me, that he uh, has spent much of his time in uh, the camp after and before working his forced labor work by counting. He wanted to remain sane. He was afraid of uh, losing his sanity and by counting he felt like he's not insane, that he's still on earth, he's still anchored to the reality. But mm -hmm. he, doc he, he, he wrote the diary there or in retrospect? Uh, in the retrospect. This uh -huh. is a memoir. Okay. Okay, so uh, um, I don't know too many people that could yeah. it could uh, write diaries there they didn't have neither pens pencils or, or, Except or those papers. who wrote in uh, in po yeah. in the yeah, yeah. polish uh, in warsaw ghetto and hid it in the uh, yeah but it, wo those, but it was not like the yeah. atrocity it was not like the very bad conditions of being in a concentration camp or in a, um, a forced labor camp in any case it was after my mother passed away and actually the last two years of his life that mm -hmm. he... Uh, so, uh, I, I, uh, I follow his footsteps, I wonder, I, uh, 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 following his footsteps and, and went to his concentration camp that he spent time and to his hometown in, the, uh, in Transylvania, which is, used to be like part of Hungary, now it's part of Romania. And I... Uh, end up with a film that uh, told his story, not least also uh, told the story of me, of myself and my siblings, a second generation of Holocaust survivors. Uh, yet I was not, I, I didn't feel like I'm done. I felt like him being the six million and one was actually uh, both sides, like he could have been a victim, he could have been murdered, but he actually lived his life as a victim. And for me as a child, as a grown up, I, I saw him um, struggling for, um, I would say, his strengths uh, of being a father. And um, tell you just one example, he chose a job or work which took him out of home every Sunday morning, uh, which is the first day of working here in Israel, and uh, brought him back home every Friday. And I would say even sometimes once in two weeks. So for me at home, he was kind of a guest, a guest for weekends. And yes, he had to provide family. We were five, actually could have been seven, but five. And um, uh, uh, he, he worked hard. He was on construction, uh, water pipes, uh, roads, um, sort of work on, on big um, tractors, sites, sites yeah. and uh, um, different sort of infrastructures. Et Only years later, I understood 
that it was not like by chance. He found the job and did it all his life because he could not stand the crying of babies, not even his own. So he had to find himself a job that took him out of home and only come up to... So Did he tell you that or how did oh, you find out? I, I found out because he told us about the uh, uh, about suffering that much from remembering his young brother who went to the gas chambers immediately upon arriving to Auschwitz. Mm -hmm. So um, one, w when he wrote his memoir, he had to start writing all over again at least three or four times because the, the point where he had to report the death of his little brother was impossible for him to pass. This was like... Relieving um, it. It, it. It was like a, a moment that he could not tell. So he stopped for a week or so, sometimes two weeks, and then started all over again writing. How old was he when he entered the camp? Uh, when he entered the camp, he was 16 years old. Mm. And... Um, uh, uh, so, uh, this was my father, and, and, and he, he survived, but he still carried his pain with him and the trauma for th his entire life. My mother was also a survivor. She was from another area uh, called Transnistria. Uh, it's like not one specific camp, it's like area, a zone of different camps. And she uh, spent her life sitting on one chair, one armchair in our living room at home, surrounded by piles of magazines in uh, Romanian, in German, uh, in Hebrew also, reading, um, clipping out pictures and recipes. She had like tons of, of, of um, notebooks with clips of recipes she, she clipped out from this. Uh, she never did one dish out of this. <laughs> Maybe it's, it's better for you that she didn't. Uh, well, I'm not <laughs> sure, but in any case, what she did was only what she knew how to do it from her own mother. Right. So this was her way to travel the world. Mm -hmm. She had recipes from France, from Sweden, from, from the Far East, from uh, Italy, from so many different places. Mm. Uh, she, she spent time like traveling all these places, like, like by just virtually. by clipping vi vi virtually. And, 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 and beside it, she also clipped out pictures and symbols, like the flags of nations, like uh, a very uh, important or significant places around the world, like the uh, Pisa uh, Tower, like the Eiffel, etc so when we were young when we were at the school age um, I, I was uh, like approaching her and asked her uh, mom do you have a um, picture of flag of Sweden for me yes I do uh, do you have a picture of George Washington of um, the she Brandenburg Tower she was our Google she was your Google photo she yeah. was our <laughs> Google <laughs> and, 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 and and but this is all she was because the, the, she, she, she was not like splitting the time between Googling, clipping, and doing other stuff. Like mothering. Like mothering, exactly. Mm -hmm. So my real mother was my grandmother, her mother who uh, used to, uh, to, to live with us. And who was and also uh, a survivor. Uh, was also a survivor, but she came out somehow different. Because she was older. She, she was older when she entered. Uh, it yes. affects you what's your age when you maybe, enter. Maybe, maybe. I, I wouldn't like to play the psychology here, but I, I don't have answers. I know the fact. The fact that she was much more vivid, much more lively, much more daring, and much more living the life. Mm -hmm. uh, she used to take me uh, out for short trips, like from our hometown, Petr Tigva, to Tel Aviv, when I was a child. And my mother says, uh, it's school day today, no? She said, uh, my, my grandmother used to say, he will, uh, I, I assume, learn more with uh, spending the time with me a day out of the, than in school today. Mm -hmm. It's okay. So, 
the, the story comes just to tell you that the number for me was always actually six million and two. Mm-hmm. Mm. It was six million and one, my father finding his memoir, but actually as grown up, as, as second generation to Holocaust survival, for me it was six million and two. But the six million as a notion, as a symbol, as an icon, haunted me and, and, and I, I just had to understand it. Why? Why? Because I thought, how come people, uh, wh- where, did, where does this number come from? So what did you Who find counted? out? Who counted? Uh, I found out that there are no questions, that there are no answers. <laughs> I found out Good that... Good Jewish documentary. No, I, 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 yeah, it very just ends Jewish. with more questions. V- very Jewish. And I'll tell you what, I, I'm proud of it because I, I can tell you, but a Nobel laureate uh, 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 winner, Isidor Rabi, uh he was a f- uh, dealing with physics uh, born in in brooklyn and he once asked what is the secret how did you make it this is success of life said i was growing up in brooklyn jewish family um, most of the jewish mothers used to ask their kids what did you learn today in school my mother asked me what did you ask today in school and by asking, I actually made my way up. Uh, and, and this is like thing I, I, I understood that I must follow because I wanted to understand the number and I understood that in order to understand, I have to learn. And the secret of learning is asking questions. So where did those questions lead you to in the beginning? Like who did you seek out and what kind of answers did you get in the beginning? Uh, I approached very different people from their different disciplines. From music, because I know how um, close mathematics is to music, to mathematics, to sciences, to history, to philosophy, literature. I talked to many people because I wanted to ask them, what, what does this number actually uh, stands for, for you? in your opinion, your perspective. And it was very interesting because I got many different uh, questions. And one thing I found that I would say like we are, how many, 70 years after the uh, Second World War ended, like mm-hmm. from 45, mm-hmm. is it 70 or more? Yeah. more? Uh, uh, I'm not good in mathematics, yeah, you see. It's 80, 80, 80, 80 sure. yes, uh, no, 80, Depends uh, how you count. Uh, no, no, I mean, it's not depending on count. It, it depends. We're talking about, we are on January uh, 22, 80 years ago, uh, the, Vase, the Vanze conference. Right. Uh, uh, today, took, eight took year, place. 80 years ago today, yes, by the way. Yes. Today. So, I, I, I found out that there are no really answers and no definitions and no consensus about many different issues of the Holocaust. And the first one of them, and maybe the most important, was the time frame right. of the Holocaust. When does it start? When does it end? Do we start counting uh, the Jews murdered, like from the day Hitler came to power, 1933? Do we start counting from the Kristallnacht, uh, um, in English? The yeah, the Christian the, the Christian Okay. Uh, uh, in 1938, the wars that started in 1939, the Vanze Conference where the final solution actually had been planned, 41. Where do we start counting? And the more people you ask, the more answers you get. Or actually, and, and so the same historians can't agree on anything, basically. Well, they can't agree, and they are proud of not being uh, ac- actually not having to uh, to agree. And as one of the uh, historians told me, you have to come here at the Yad Vashem Institute. There's one long corridor where there are lots of rooms assigned for the historians, and from time to time you can find us. Each one of us standing in the front of his own room and shouting on each other, discussing loudly, well, if you say, uh, or debating. So, yes, uh, but uh, I think that uh, it was interesting for me because I was not after 
the precise number. I knew six, number, six million is a roundup number, hence my, the title of the film, The Round Number. But I was not looking for an alternative number. I was just looking for understand how can a, how does a figure, a number, etched in right. memory, in the collective like memory of people, the histi- Jews and not Jews. Historiography uh, of, uh, of the number, yes. basically. Basically, yes. And basically also I understood that it is very difficult for people, it is difficult to, uh, even today for me to fully grasp the, the, the amount of six million people are, are dying, dead people. And it's like, you know, it's like, uh, 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 can you tell me what really are the measures of, of uh, 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 the, I would say, not all, light, light year. Light year. I mean, yeah. uh, it's hard to it, perceive. It's hard but, to perceive. But why is it so hard to count? I mean, we know, for example, more or less how many Jews were in Poland before World War II, right? Yeah. We know more or less. I mean, more or less, it's three million, maybe a bit more, a bit less. And we know how many, uh, how many w- were left after, after the war. It's, no? not, it's, it's not a matter of uh, difficulties of counting. The question was, where d- did this number come from and why? Because I found out, it was not my revelation, it, uh, Professor Dan Michman told me, uh, two months after the war had finished, meaning July 45. Abba Kovner, partisan Abba Kovner, who was one of the leaders of uh, uprising at uh, Vilna, um, addressed a group of, of, of uh, Jewish uh, power troops of the, from the British Brigade in Italy, two months after the war. And he told them, we will have to understand that six million of our people, the Jewish people, uh, is lost. And this is something that we have to address and to understand. How did he know? Two how? months. How did he know? Two months. So how did he know? I don't know, but I tell you more than this. <laughs> January 1944, which means like around 18 months or 17 months before the war ended. A Jewish religious Orthodox guy from, from Europe managed to uh, come to Israel. His name was Eliezer Unger. Uh, he had a sort of a, um, there was a conference or, or gathering, and he was talking in front of people, and he told them, listen, six million people of our Jewish people in Europe is gone, is lost. We lost six million people. And I'm talking one and a half years before the war ended. Mm -hmm. So you ask me what are problems of counting? The thing is that I understood, and this was really something that amazed me, that the number six million was there before the war was even finished. And the number six million was not a result of counting. It was like a sort of a popular number that was there. Yet, the finding is not that number is not six million. The fi- my finding, what was interesting for me, was to find that the number six million was a popular number, yet it is true. So at the end of all my research, of all my journey, I understood that the two of them, the myth, the, the and, myth, reality. The myth and the reality are coming is together. Is it true though? Yes, it is true according to what I understand now. It is not proven, it is not accurate, it is not precise. A precise number will never be uh, uh, found, will never be reached, but probably yes. Now. We have like a, an historian by the name of Gerald Reitlinger, a very well-known British historian. And he said at the early uh, 60s or something uh, that 4,200,000 Jews were murdered. Another Holocaust historian, 
very famous, one of the most influential, uh, prominent uh, historians by the name of uh, Raoul Hilberg, uh, said the number was five million and one hundred thousand. Um, the counting of, of, of Yad Vashem uh, representatives, Professor Gutmann and others, uh, came about five million and eight hundred. Now, in the recent years, uh, Father Patrick de Bois, a French uh, priest who took him upon himself a mission to find all uh, Jews that were murdered, unlisted, unregistered, in, 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 uh, by the Zonder Commando in the former countries of the uh, uh, USSR, found that mass graves of more than a million people. And by that, he actually pointed out that the number could have been more than seven million. Mm -hmm. So the differences are, 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 are big, are, are huge, like from four to seven. But from what I understood, the most profound or reliable research made by Yad Vashem, uh, made by research of Yad Vashem, and also by others, came to numbers that are very close to six million. Uh, so yes, we are not far from this number, yet the question is really cultural and, and, and psychological and, and, and other, whether to use the number six million or not. So on one hand, it's a symbol, very easy to use in ceremonies. No, nobody will tell you, uh, listen, a number of five million, seven hundred thirty, etc. You say six million, you know what you're talking about. We, everybody knows what you're, yeah. you're talking about. Professor Bauer, who is maybe one of the, um, I would say, most important, significant important historians of the Holocaust, says, I don't use the number six million. I don't care for it, he says. Uh, this, I don't care for it because I don't believe it. I don't, I don't use it. It's, it's not, not important. A, it's says. not that I don't care for the Jews, of course, that were murdered. I don't care because, because he says the reason for him not to use it is because two reasons. One, the number six million was decided by the Germans, came up from by the Germans at the Nuremberg trials. And the second reason is because the number that was probably found and the most clo or the, the closest to reality is 5,700,000 or something, and I'm not going to kill 300,000 Jews just by the saying again and again, 6 million. Uh, I'm a historian and I, I'm, I'm, I'm very much accurate on, on what I'm saying. So- uh, That's Professor Bauer. That's, this is Professor Bauer and-, and, and, and and of course, but uh, it looked in the movie that he really tries to, I, w I won't say silence you, but he doesn't like the, the discussion. And to me, it seems very un historianish, unscientific, unscientific to. Well, you'll to have to invite him for your next podcast. Yeah, well. <laughs> I cannot speak, you know, um, I'm, I'm not here neither to attack nor, nor to defend him. Yeah. It's no, but not you by did debate with him in the I, movie. I, I did, I did debate with him a few times before coming to shoot yeah. him in the movie, of course. Must uh, be but scary, it was so scary you had to bring uh, uh, a co-fighter uh, uh, with I you. I did, I did, of course. I did a friend, I, I did, I did meet with me. Uh, <laughs> you didn't I have the guts to go by yourself. No, I didn't. <laughs> And I tell you yeah. more than this, it's not that I didn't got the guts to go by myself, but I wanted answers. I didn't want him to get rid of me just, you know, by I'm the talking, etc. end of a story. Mm -hmm. I wanted him to be serious in, an, in, in, in answering me. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and one of the, the things that I could not actually uh, uh, decipher or, or, or understand for me was why not and what is the implications or what is the implication of of not using the number six million in terms of the public sphere because i i when i wanted to ask him about it he shut mouth and said i don't care about public sphere i'm 94 years old i can speak for or, and say whatever i want i don't care what people will say but on the other hand look oh, my kids uh, others uh, uh, here in Israel and the rest of the world will continue to say six million every uh, every Holocaust Day, Memorial every Memorial Day, 
so uh, would you would you say that no don't say anymore the number of of uh, um, of the murders of the victims because you don't believe or would you say the question of history versus memory mem- memory was brought later in the film by uh, dr milgram who researched this uh, but it was started by uh, by uh, professor bauer and it was interesting because uh, he was talking about the difference between myths and realities and he brought up another story of the myth of making soap from the jews which was not true uh, why was it why was this why was this uh, myth uh, uh, circled in the uh, in, in jewish communities because the germans told the jews that they are not making soap from them uh, look uh I could have started the film with this meeting I could have end the film with this meeting I could have put it in the uh, in, uh, somewhere between or cut I, I it felt, out of the movie or cut it out of the uh, but no but I felt like it is important it is it is a seminal moment mm-hmm. which was really uh, important for me uh, because to talk to professor Bauer was really uh, um, a moment to cherish mm-hmm. so were you were you kind of uh, shut out by certain people in the Holocaust research community because of the raising this question uh, not really not really shut up but uh, um, I think that uh, uh, it's interesting like what happens is that people wanted to participate and they were very much uh, um, after me in a while like to 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 say to, to speak up to bring their own ideas later I, I mean when the film uh, was uh, released I felt like there was some sort of uh, uh, withdrawing mm. in the sen- in the sense of now that the film is out we have like second thoughts not from you or about you meaning not about me my way my, my my journey but about the implications of the film and for me it was clear to actually to tell everybody while shooting while editing and now that is a very personal journey I'm not an historian I'm not competing with uh, writing a history I'm telling a story about how the The history was written mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm I'm dealing with the historiographical uh, issue of, of of the Holocaust but I'm not coming instead of and I'm not c- going to prove anything to the historians which they don't know it's just a matter of understanding that I I have put clips together while researching while searching while uh, um, embarking on, on 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 a journey that took me to further and further into questions mm. so. if, if we were to find out like that then the, if we if tomorrow there was I don't know a, a groundbreaking research showing proving that the number is four million yes. would it diminish the Holocaust in any way I think that the answer is really that in your question your question is your answer Because it's really up to your perspective if if you are in Holocaust denier it doesn't matter even doesn't you don't you don't believe any either way uh, yeah if you are a Jew it doesn't matter also this is why I'm telling everybody telling you and I was uh, I told the historians I, I'm not looking for a number I'm not looking to correct or to make this number precise mm-hmm. it was just interesting for me a uh, culture wise to To understand the way a number becomes an icon right. and the way an icon uh, actually functions in in our daily routine and other routines like political routines or, or sociological routine etc so of course the Germans will not be uh, worse if the number will be seven they will not be good if the number will be four yeah we the hate them anyway <laughs> uh, we we do not hate them 
we, we, we hate the idea of what they did and we do not understand how come they did it so far. I, I don't think anyone had come up with the idea of what was the reason and how, how did it hap- happen yeah. to all these, I mean, uh, intellectuals in Germany that could uh, join this mass murder. Uh, but yes. Uh, but it's a fact also that th- this number is one of the first weapons deniers use. Right? They, they, this is one of the first right. things well, they I'm attack. I'm not sure it is the first, but it is one of them. The others are the gas chambers, etc. But, you know... I as, think, as, uh, I think uh, uh, Abbas has his famous doctorate in uh, right. Holocaust denial, and I think that's one of the things that he attacks there. He tries to claim that the number is 100,000. And I think it goes back to what you were saying to Nao, is that it, it kind of r- is revealing when when a denier tries to say the number wasn't six million, it was a hundred thousand. It's like, and a hundred thousand isn't devastatingly tragic. No, like, because he would also clear, uh, uh, claim, uh, suggest that the hundred thousand were sick. They were not murdered. Yeah. Uh, uh, you can go with, uh, th- there's no point in actually trying to have a dialogue with, with uh, Holocaust deniers. There's no, mm. no sort of common ground f- to talk to them. Yeah. So, I, I'm I'm not, I'm not talking to them. I'm I'm. They are not my my uh, 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 audience, and this is. Did not you my get aim. messages from Holocaust deniers? No, uh, I I haven't. I was trying, by the way, to uh, to talk. Really? And to find yes, I was I was trying to uh, talk because it was interesting for me to find the way of thinking. As for this say, movie or for another movie? No, no, for this one. It uh, would be very interesting because if you're talking about the number six million, to get someone's perspective of how they're against the number, and it is quite well known because they they they, they, um, uh, they had tried to put Deborah Lipstadt, professor mm-hmm. Deborah Lipstadt, from that said, she uh, was on, on the trial. podcast by the yeah. way. Yeah, uh, and she, and, wow. and and was yeah. <laughs> and, and and of course they lost uh, b- the battles. They, they lost. Well, she won. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and by winning, actually, she had shut their mouths. I mean, w- w- what else can they say after sh- they lost the war against uh, Deborah Lipstadt? And yet, so you couldn't uh, find. A I, I, I. It's not that I couldn't find. Uh, I, I, I wanted to understand, but it was not part of my agenda, my, 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 my journey, my, my journey, my cinematic journey. Right, but. This is why I brought uh, Carlos, Rabbi Carlos, mm-hmm. who used to uh, pretend as a Holocaust uh, denier uh, in the U.S. Army uh, West Point uh, Academy. Academy. Yeah. And he used to come uh, and, and tell the... Uh, st- he would the pose as a Holocaust denier. The Holocaust denier. And then um, reveal his real identity, uh, uh, and that was his act, basically. And then he would debate with the... Uh, yes, and, and, and this is like the closest I wanted to uh, come because it was clear for me that if, the, if he had mind that to know your enemy, this is like very important for soldiers, for commanders in the battlefield, because you know your enemy, you know how to anticipate what their move, next move will be. Mm-hmm. And one of your enemies, one of my enemies would be like a, a, a Holocaust denier. This is why I wanted to uh, listen to a Holocaust denier. So yes, I, 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 I met once, I met a Holocaust denier who, was, who is Jewish, by the way, in Los Angeles. Really? And I, t- I, t- I talked to me, <laughs> I, t- I talked to him. Uh, he said that uh, it is uh, behind him and he's not anymore in this game. But in any case, <laughs> for me, it was he retired from the. For me, it was interesting. Yeah, mm. and uh, and and even uh, not even just because he left uh, all of this behind him, it was even more um, easy for him to talk. Mm-hmm. But there, no, there was nothing really. What was his? Cl- what were his claims? Uh, nothing. This is what I'm telling you. It, it was nothing really uh, to to tell home about. Uh, come, nothing. I mean, you could you could actually come up with the same. Yeah. No, when I was a, a denier, I saw that the gas chambers are um, uh, were not built. The the the, the whole story was uh, fake, etc., etc. 
So, right. Uh, uh, for me, since again, it was not like um, uh, declaring war on Holocaust deniers film. Uh, it was not like a, a, an attempt to uh, research or to replace historians in the researching statistics, etc. It was more like a, the, the, the combination of, a, of an, a cinematic essay with the historical journey together from one perspective, from one, my perspective, from a very personal one. I, I just uh, allowed myself to include or to leave out what, did, uh, what I, d I, I didn't want to include and to include what uh, was interesting for me on my journey. Um, anything else? Was your father's story a part of the, the film? Your yeah, mother's in, story? In, in a way, yes. In a minor way. Mm -hmm. My... Uh, you had some vintage footage yes. of them. I have a lot of... of I have a lot of, I've been filming uh, my family for many, many years. In any case, uh, I found one occasion in which we talked to my father uh, in our uh, living room or uh, after after a dinner, of, uh, after Shabbat dinner, and uh, he uh, told us that he is really uh, is, su is suffering twice, one from what happened to him, but also the second one because he was so much disciplined. What does it mean? The four soldiers, local soldiers, which were not really sort of uh, elite commando soldiers, yeah, elite. Uh, they were like uh, what you call the civil uh, soldiers or haga. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, led a, a convoy of, I would say, 3,000 people from their hometown to the train station. Nobody actually left the rows. Nobody asked questions. Everybody was... A, four a, a soldiers. Four soldiers, 3,000 people, that's all. 3,000 Jews. 3,000 Jews. And all of the Jews went like sheep to slaughter to these uh, trains. And what he said, like, we believed, those days we believed in God, and we knew that God, if he, if he needs to, he will come and rescue us. He will come to help us. So, so, so they so, didn't help themselves. So they didn't help themselves, and God didn't help them, and since ever since, he was asking, where is God? But one thing he said, until this day, at the day I shot him, it was like 1993, I think, I don't understand how come and why was I disciplined that way. Disciplined for what? Why? By that who? By himself. By himself. I, he no, was. But why? Who? I mean, you don't discipline yourself from the age of zero. Who disciplines you? Your parents or your the belief or in your God. system. That's this the education and and the understanding that you have God to to keep an eye on you. Uh, this so is like the auto his parents his parents is a school his community. Is a community everybody yeah uh, so uh, and and and, his, and he was like uh, really angry with himself and when i saw it i understood my own way my own way that i took the journey i made i made the journey because i didn't agree and i wasn't agreed to be disciplined and to take like a figure or a symbol or like and just because somebody said it is sacred and not to touch it i want to decipher it and i i think that i i don't want to leave one stone unturned but it doesn't mean that i'm going to pick up the stones and throw them on someone mm -hmm. So, how can people uh, abroad see the movie? Um, can people reach out? Like, can you do do community events? May maybe via Zoom. Well, yes. Uh, very soon we'll start. Uh, Thank this film worldwide, uh, Europe, America. My previous films were uh, seen in the t uh, television in the PBS in the United States, the public television, and Arte and BBC in, 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 in Europe. Uh, so Do you I have a website? Pardon? You have a website? No, no, I, I don't have the website. I have a website for all of my films, but 
my f- this one is not really it's included new. yet. It's new, uh, and it starts and it will uh, take me to how very can many people places. stay updated then? <laughs> Do uh, you <laughs> can can they reach out to you? Can well, they first uh, first uh, the many of them reach out to me already. Okay. Yes, uh, so my uh, email. Yes. Okay. They, they, I get uh, a lot of, uh, um, uh, I get a lot of emails because a few articles uh, were written in mm. English. Okay. And the main article, the main interview with me in Haaretz was also published in the Haaretz English, which is part of uh, affiliation with with the New York Times. So there's a lot of people. Uh, okay. Know. Uh, but yes, it will take time okay. uh, f- uh, now on, and it will reach audiences here and there. So I have made a lot of, I made a very uh, um, uh, cost-to-cost trip with my previous film, The Six Million One, and I met a lot of audiences with cues and eyes after, and I believe that uh, this will follow because okay. uh, because it is uh, both. It is like uh, an, uh, maybe an interesting but also thought-provoking film, which uh, uh, calls for discussion yeah so guys uh just google the the name of the film in english which the round number the round number the round right? number by david fisher and uh stay updated yes. hopefully after omicron we can go and do film festivals again exactly soon so Thank you. after delta cron yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's no, the next apparently uh, there's apparently a new variant no 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 <laughs> don't no? scare our, no no no, oh, okay. don't spread fake news. Anyway, uh, thank okay, you so, so much. Epsilon. For, yeah, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for uh, Before me. we go, guys, uh, we are uh, done in collaboration with Arutz Sheva. Check them out at yes. israelnationalnews.com. Also, the Australian Jewish News. AJN.timesofisrael.com. Check them out for the Australian angle. AJM.timesofisrael.com. And last but not least. Yes, we accept donations. Please go to 2NGB.com slash donate and go to 2NGB.com slash merch to buy our mugs. We have a BDS Tears mug and a nice Jewish boy mug. And yes. that is it. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with the movie. Bye, guys. Bye.